Hey data fans, Reed here. Today, I'm excited to walk you through the new Azure Maps visualization within Power BI. Now, it's been a while since a new map visual has been introduced as part of the native visuals included in Power BI Desktop, and this is by far the most feature-rich one to get included with the toolset. So let's go ahead, hop into Power BI, and get started. So right out of the gate, one of the things that I want to mention, which is absolutely amazing about the new Azure Maps visual, is the number of unique elements that it can actually display. This new map visual can now display over 30,000 unique data points before it has to start doing sampling. Whereas the old map visual in Power BI, the one that's been around for a while, just the standard map, can only display a few thousand. So that's an immediate knock out of the park. I will mention though, the data does require both latitude and longitude to display the data. And the one thing that it doesn't actually do at the moment is have any kind of hierarchies for things like city, region, country, etc. So you are limited to displaying the data points based off of the location of the latitude and longitude. And then similar to the other map visual, you have the size to determine how big those bubbles are going to be by default. And just starting from the user experience perspective, you'll see that there's a few things in here that can actually be customized for the user once you publish this. These things can be turned on and off, but they are something that the user will have access to in the service. So I can actually change the style. One of my favorites are actually the dark colored ones over here, but you can change those from anything to the actual satellite views, et cetera. And the user can do this as much as they would like to. We also have the standard zoom controls as well. And then an option to actually change the pitch too, to determine what kind of perspective we might want with the map. Even the actual uh, rotation, if we decided to rotate the map at all as well, can be adjusted here. And as, as I was mentioning, these also can all be controlled over in the format pane and can be accessed under the map settings, whether or not you want the auto zoom on, whether or not you want the world wrap on, which actually means that it will not actually have a wrap over here, it just cuts it off versus basically continuing the wrap if you were to scroll to the left or the right and kind of follow that trail as well. And the style picker, that's the, what I mentioned here, that turns off that little style picker at the top. And then the navigation controls just determines if you want your end users to have those. And then you can also specify the map style here for the default when you publish it. Now, besides the bubbles that you have, which are located in here, the bubbles can be turned on and off for the map itself. You can also separately turn on bar charts. Now, I'm personally not one who is super keen on the idea of bars. I don't really like 3D objects, so that's not something I'm going to go into in great detail, but that is available to have on the map itself and can be configured. And as you can see, it does resample and scale as you zoom in and out. But again, it's not something that I'm particularly interested in displaying. So I just want to mention it's there, but I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on it. Go ahead and turn back on the bubbles. There we go. And turn back the pitch to the regular. Perfect. And you do also have some options as far as the general layer settings. So like as an example, if you make a selection, you can determine how much the other ones will become transparent, whether or not to show zeros and negatives. And you can actually set your min and your max for the bubble sizes if you wanted to have a maximum value that was not set automatically. This one's set to the maximum based on the value, so this will be adjusted, but I can manually change this if I want to. Go ahead and close that also move into something called the reference layer. So this is actually a really nice way to use GeoJSON files to be able to add secondary layers of data into this report. So let me clear my filter selection in here. I'm going to go ahead and add a local file. I'm going to go to GeoJSON, and I'm going to go ahead and add municipal boundaries. And I'll zoom in to the place that this is located. This is actually data that is located in Illinois. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom into that. There we go. And what that was is this is just some geospatial data specifically for one of the counties in Illinois where it actually shows the different boundaries based off of various districts within that area. So that was something that I added in based off of this. So you do need to obtain that data to put into here, but there's a lot of ways to layer on your data into this that the original map visual did not have. Similar to what you could do with the ArcGIS map. Go ahead and get rid of that. Perfect. Let's go ahead and just zoom back out. And one other thing we also have in here is the option to add a traffic layer. That's turned on and used automatically by the Bing and Azure map data. So if we zoom into here with the traffic layer on, what we can see, if we click show incidents, that is now going to populate this onto the page. There you go. We can see that there's actually some traffic incidents in various places. As we zoom further in, we'll see more of them. There you go. You can see all the various traffic incidences and accidents that are happening, um, anything related to road um, reports. And if you actually close, and if you actually turn on traffic control, 
That will give the user the option to show or hide traffic based off of the toggle once you publish this. This will become available for them. And I'll go ahead and turn that back off. Now, one thing that you do not have access to, but you can also add in here as well as some tile layers. So if you have the URL specified for this, and I'll provide the link to the Microsoft documentation for more detail on this, you can actually add a bunch of additional layers in here as far as maybe some weather data or just tons of other different data that again can be layered on top of the map. Now, I don't have a URL handy for this, but I just wanted to mention that this is another advanced way to add and layer on data into your map visual. But overall, I'm really loving the new map visual that they have released. It's added a lot of additional advanced features, started to push it more towards an ArcGIS type environment where you do have customization on the number of ways to display the data, whether or not it's bubbles or the columns. I hope at some point they add a heat map, but that's not available today. But the number of data points is the biggest factor. Going from a few thousand to 30,000 unique points really makes it a lot more rich when it comes to displaying this much data all at once. As you can even see in front of you, it renders fairly quickly. And just the fact that the users can now actually change the map background at will, and they have all these controls over here, is a really nice additional feature set that's included with this. Thank you so much for watching. And please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. If this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, smash that subscribe and notification button. And last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below.